Okay, what, I'm, what am I going to actually talk about? Um, it's an observation from Tim Berners-Lee uh, here, and this was um, kind of the design principles for the web. And he wrote this in the early 90s, hence why um, the first paragraph is, is sort of time anchored. Computer science in the 1960s to 80s spent a lot of effort making languages which are as powerful as possible. Um, had he written that in the early 2000s, he would have changed 80s to 90s. Had he written that in the early 2010s, he would have changed that. You get the idea. Uh, nowadays, we have to appreciate the reasons for picking um, not the most powerful solution, but the least powerful. The reason for this is that the less powerful language, the more you can do with the data stored in that language. There is this idea that we, we've got this idea of like increase the power. You know, you can become omnipotent. Okay, you can become omnipotent within the code. The trick here is obviously something has to be omnipotent, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's not the bit you think it is. Maybe you need to leave the clever stuff to something else, uh, or allow the opportunity for something. Have a very simplified form of representation and optimize and organize around it. So he said, if you write it in a simple declara uh, a declarative form, um, which he mistyped, anyone can write a program uh, to analyze it in many ways. So the idea here is the declarative approach is in contrast to the imperative approach. The imperative approach covers uh, a great many paradigms and languages. The declarative approach, uh, likewise, uh, perhaps fewer, but we don't always recognize the language. Um, so for example, uh, I dug this one out. This is a printout um, of uh, Feldman's original um, make uh, paper. Um, as you can see, I've used a portable document format to store this on. Um, and uh, he wrote it in the mid-70s. Uh, and make, make is interesting, because it's one of the kind of classic family. We always think of it as build tools, but we often forget that there are a number of tools which are around the periphery of our programming skills that we don't recognize as first class um, programming languages. And um, the observation made in uh, the sink of all human knowledge is the makefile language is similar to declarative programming. There's the idea that this class of language in which necessary end conditions are described, the order in which actions are to be taken is not important. It's sometimes confusing to programmers used to imperative programming. There's this idea that what you're doing is you are stating some kind of intention. You say, this is where I want to be. Okay. You figure out the details. Oh, you can give it a hand. Obviously, there's a sliding scale. You, we don't just say there is imperative and there is declarative. There is a sliding scale. But the idea is maybe if we move over towards intent. If you've ever tried to write a build file that is strictly imperative, you kind of fall asleep after a while. Um, it's very, very boring if this file is older than that file. Eventually, you end up reinventing a declarative form because you start seeing the regularity. You say, look. There's a bunch of files here. I want to talk about their dependencies. I don't actually want to talk about the mechanics. 